Hi guys, James from Measure Square here. In today's video, we're going to talk about some of the new tile calculation features and enhancements available. So the first thing we're going to cover here is the difference between additional waste and minimum waste. So these features are only going to apply to cut and fit, half reuse, or no reuse calculation methods. So for example, we've got some rooms drawn here that are all the same size that are going to be using the same size tile and we'll just walk through the three different outputs for the cut and fit method and all of those same changes will apply to the half reuse or no reuse option. So to begin we're going to right click here on one of our tiles and we'll go ahead and say view modify details and you'll see that I've got my cut and fit selected here and below that we have an additional percentage field and this is going to act pretty similarly to an attic stock. So if we put in an additional, say, 10%, that means we're going to get not only the amount that the cut and fit calls for in our room here, where we have our tiles placed, but it's also going to give us an additional 10% to hold on to for repairs and so forth. So that's kind of the purpose here of the additional percentage. And below that we have our minimum waste field, and this is where we can actually set a percentage where the cut and fit plus the additional percent, if that's below the output here, it's going to choose the minimum waste over that. So for example, if we set this guy to say 20% as our minimum waste, and then we say our cut and fit plus 5 is what we're looking for for our regular output, if the cut and fit plus 5 doesn't give us more waste than the 20%, it's going to automatically calculate that minimum at 20% just to make sure uh, we're safe and sound. So now what we'll do is we'll start off by going in here with this first tile, and we'll do no additional percent and no minimum waste, and we'll see what that looks like. So we can see here with the zero additional percent and the zero um, minimum waste, when we look at our waste percentage, we're going to be at 14.2%. Now note that since we're using the cut and fit, that is going to be dependent on the pattern position. So if I go up here to the pattern position button and choose to say lock in the tile placement in this bottom corner, similar to the neighboring rooms here, you'll see that our waste is going to be at 11.8. So again, that's going to be with no additional percentage and no minimum waste. Now for our middle room here, we'll go into our view modify and we'll make sure that we have our cut and fit plus say an additional 5% with no minimum waste. So when we make that change and save it, we should be looking at a waste percentage that is 5% over our usage number from before, which is 110.25 square feet. So that usage times 1.05 for our new additional waste percentage of 5% equals 115.76 square feet or a waste of 17.3%. Now this third room, we're going to go ahead and set up a minimum waste and see what happens. So if I go in here into CT3 and say right click view modify details, I've got my cut and fit plus 5 which would give us around our 17.3 since we're working with the exact same pattern position. But since I've chosen to put in a 20% minimum waste, that means that the 20% waste is going to be selected because it's the minimum value we're telling the program we find acceptable. So even though the true waste is probably closer to that 17.3, it's going to give us that 20% since we did that minimum waste override. So in part two of the video, we'll talk about the uh, project level tile estimation setting panel, which can be found up here in the top center when we select the tile and click on the gear. To view the project level estimation settings for CT3, we'll first click on the gear and then we can go through the menu based off of the style of calculation method we have. For example, when we're using cut and fit or other calculation methods besides the waste add-on, such as half reuse or no reuse, you'll see we have additional options such as the additional percentage, minimum waste, and ignore tiny size. 
So first we'll go through the ignore tiny size dropdown as this pertains to all of the options besides the waste add-on. This is basically a feature that says if we have a cut piece of tile smaller than this size, we're going to ignore that when we're using the calculate by piece or cut and fit. For example, if we use cut and fit here and we say ignore tiny size of say four inches and then click outside the menu. So we can see here if we resize our room a little bit, I'm able to dial in a piece here along the edge where our cut and fit will now be usable since the piece size over here is at five inches instead of four inches. But if we adjust our pattern position to where we have less than that amount remaining over here, since this dimension is now going to be three inches, we're not able to use that cut and fit because of the ignore tiny size. So since we have the ignore tiny size at four inches, we aren't able to use it for this piece here. But if I were to say drop that down to three inches, now we're able to use that remnant to fill in this three inch row here. So that's kind of how the ignore tiny size feature will work. And again, that ignore tiny size is available on cut and fit, no reuse, or the half reuse as well as the additional percent and minimum waste. So now going forward, we'll look at the cut and fit options here, since we have some additional fields that we're able to work with. So what the fixed texture matching is going to do is it's going to force all of the tiles to be laid in the same direction. So it's going to ignore allowing rotation or preferring the factory edge. So what we're gonna do here is we'll go ahead and turn on our view option for the tile direction and we'll see that with this product here since we have it set to fixed texture matching these are all going to go the same way regardless of fit whereas if we work with say our pink tile over here if we go into our settings we can say allow rotation based off of the best fit here. So if we went into the, the pattern position and say chose right there, we can see, for example, that this remnant here is going to be coming from over here. So it won't really affect the layout position there. The next option we can discuss is the allow rotation. So if we toggle this feature off, it will not allow us to rotate these fill pieces here to say fill in a gap on this region of the plan. So if we toggle this back on and then click outside the menu, we'll see that now we're able to utilize some of these pieces here along this edge, basically letting us lower the waist as long as we're okay with that directional change. Next, we'll go ahead and cover the Prefer Factory Edge. So this feature, when selected, will tell the program to preferably use the factory whole edge of a tile for the perimeter of a space. So if we go ahead and turn on this feature here and then look at our rooms, when we look at our details here, we can see that this bold line represents the factory edge of the tile. So if we turn this on in our other example, we can compare that as well. So when we look at the plan set here, we'll see that these edges here that are kind of bolded along here and this side as well, that bold red line represents that factory edge for us. The next option we're going to discuss is the max cut times. And this is a really nice feature because it will allow us to take some of these tiles where we have quite a bit of the tile left and we can choose how many times we want to be able to cut that remnant. 
So right now we have it set to one. So for example, if we switch over to our pink product here and we say, let's change the max cut times to two, you'll see that now when we're working with say this piece here, that we're actually able to get these extra fill pieces, not only from one tile, but two there. So we're kind of piecing this together accordingly. Okay, and the last thing we're gonna cover here is going to be our cut margin. So this is going to give us some additional insurance over the tile size as we're cutting it. So for the cut margin here, this is essentially saying, say for this piece here that we have within the room, that we want to build in an extra buffer around this piece of X number of inches. So that way if we're doing precision work, we can say maybe we want that two inches oversized. So if I build in a cut margin of say two inches, we'll go ahead and click outside the menu here. We'll see that that will adjust our waist accordingly because now we're building in that two inch buffer around each of these pieces that are going to be cut and fit off of an individual tile. Going down our list here, the next options we can cover will be our waste share option. And this is a nice one because it'll allow us to define the scope at which we're sharing the tile waste for a given product across the project. So right now I have this set up at the tab level. So that means anything on this floor or tab is going to be shareable with this CT1. Now I could also change that to say just the room level. So that way I'm only trying to share waste across this room. So even if I have another room on my plan set, that's going to be using this same product, we won't be sharing waste there. And then lastly, we have the project level. So that way, even if we have 15 different tabs, we have a multiple floor building, if we want to have the most aggressive waste numbers possible, we can even share that waste across the whole project. Next, we'll discuss the uh, waste share radius. So the nice thing about this radius here is that we can actually define the scope in a 3D way of where that waste will be shared. So for example, if we go into this room and view the walls and do say a floor to ceiling tile approach here across this room, we can actually share the waste not only amongst the floors of this project, but along the walls as well. So what we can do is we can set this as a default. It's going to be set to an infinite amount which means it will basically try and share across any floors and walls within the project. And we can also dial that back to say within uh, 36 feet. So that'll kind of be within a globe for a larger room. And then we can go down in value more and more so that we can kind of define that the waste is only being shared say within this room or even within one particular area of the room. If we go to our system settings and click on the tile estimation tab, we can configure some of the default settings such as max cut times, cut margin, ignore tiny size, and so on. And we can click save to save these changes. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more great videos.